Hi, my name is Jesus from Extension IT, and this is the model printer you guys are getting at home, and I'm going to show you how to set it up. This comes with a fantastic book that I'm going to be following uh, basically page by page. First thing on the printer, you unbox it. You have to tilt the box over on the side, slide the printer out. Once you get it off, it's not so bad. And here are the instructions of getting the printer set up, and that's on page three of your book. What this tells you to do is basically if it has orange, it comes off. And anything that's orange comes out of your printer. This is all for packaging so it doesn't get jostled around and broken. All the clear stuff comes off. So just go around your printer and anywhere you see orange tape, take it off. Be careful on anything that looks loose, take it off gently. You take off that cover too, that's not needed. Any plastic covering comes off. And they got every pretty much every glossy surface covered with some kind of wrapping. So again, anything you see, any orange tape, safe to remove. And usually they make it pretty easy to come off. The back has an orange tape that goes into the actual printer right here. Just bring this down gently and all this comes right out. That just pulls right out and then you gently put it right back up. So now the printer should be ready to go comes with a couple of cables. You're going to need your USB cable to connect to the printer to the laptop and then your power cable and your CD for drivers if needed. These printers actually have a neat feature where the software is located on the printer. As soon as you connect it to your computer it should begin to load and we'll walk you through that process. Another thing, the paper tray comes set for travel. So you have to push down this little blue tab and set it all the way to letter, which is located right here. Same thing on this side. There is a letter right here, which is usually just the width of the paper, and you just put it all the way out. So letter here, this all the way out, and then you can slide it right back into the printer. First thing we do is plug in power. We'll look at it on the bottom of the printer, bottom right. Plug it in, and then we'll turn it on. Power switch is right in the front. Well, that's warming up. Get the end of the USB cable that's more rounded. That plugs into the back of the printer on the bottom, right here, just like that. And the USB just goes into a USB slot on your computer. And I'd actually wait till it turns all the way up before turning it on, before plugging it in. Okay, the control panel is gonna come up with some basic prompts, English. USA, yes. Shipping locks from cartridges. Okay, so now we're going to look at the printing cartridges. These are the toners, and they all have the orange lock on them again, just like the printer had. So these you just take out. There's the switches, so you just pull these out. There we go. Just lift this up, pull it out, and it comes out like this. And it's basically just garbage. Slide it back in. Do these for each of the printer cartridges, each of the toners. Slide it back in. Same thing for all of them. Pop it out. Slide it out, make sure it comes all the way out. And then design the tear parts, it should be fine.
take it out from the top, slide it out, and you're good. And these printers are actually really smart. And it tells you that you have to remove that because we forgot, and then it tells you the front door is open. Slide it back in, close the door. I'm gonna grab some paper for the printer. Paper is just like any other printer. Slide it in. Make sure it's secure in the front behind the guides. Don't overload the tray because it can cause jamming. And you just wait for it to come all the way up. And these printers take quite a few minutes to boot up since they have a lot of uh, checks and diagnostic. It runs every time it turns on. So we just have to wait a little bit, get it going. Okay, so now it's ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the USB cable just to your computer. Then you're gonna get on your computer the installing driver software option on the bottom. As it looks for the printer. The program should start. If it doesn't, we're going to launch it ourselves. So it'll show up on your computer if you just click the Windows folder or just double click on my computer. It'll show up as CD Drive E HP Smart Install. So you click on that, then double click on the autorun.exe. And here it's going to ask you, it should ask you for an administrator password at some point. Just make sure you have your installer password handy. And just follow the prompts. Check the box that for the license agreement, select next when prompted. Luckily it's a pretty straightforward install. Okay, here you're going to get a control or account control message setup.exe that's the program name the publisher is Hewlett Packard HP so you know it's good so you're gonna hit yes to continue I'm logged in as the admin now but if you're logged in as yourself it'll probably ask you for a prompt which then you'd have to type in period backslash ext installer in your password Usually when there's updates, you usually don't, you don't need to do it right away. Sometimes it installs extra software. So for this particular install, I'm going to select no and run with the software that's already on the printer. Okay. So the HP printer is going to install the drivers, everything that it actually needs. There's a couple things you probably don't need is the improvement study. It sends information back to HP. Uh, let's take a look and see if we can customize that. So if you click um, customize on the bottom link there that I just clicked on, you see you can uncheck things that you don't need. Bing bar, we don't need Bing bar, so we're going to get rid of Bing bar. HP device experience, we're going to uncheck that. Status and alerts, that's actually up to you. Uh, this brings up a little pop-up window on the bottom right if your toner is running low or if you have a paper jam. It can be useful. Some people find it annoying. Some people find it useful. It's more of a personal choice. HP product improvement study. I uncheck that. What it does is gather information on how you use your printer and then it sends it back to HP. It's not, you really don't need to do that. Everything else I will leave on there because it's required. So I would uncheck the improvement study, uncheck the Bing bar, and uncheck the HP device experience. And we got here by selecting that link that said customize these options. Then you hit next. We don't need to send the report to HP, so I'm going to uncheck that. You have to check the license, um, the installation agreements, or you can't install the printer. It's a license for the software for HP, the ones that we have agreed to. So we're going to go ahead and select the box and then hit next. And then just wait for the install to happen. 
So right now the way these printers work is they have all the software installed at the factory on a little hard drive inside the, the printer itself. By connecting it with the USB cable, it allowed you to access that hard drive and install the printer on your computer. In case you ever need to install it again, that's how you do it. In case we have to re-image your computer or for some reason it just uninstalls. And all this is actually documented right in the manual that came with the printer. And it gives you a step-by-step step by step guide on how to do it. Might be a little blurry in this video, but it is included on page seven of the manual. Okay, here we are, we're at 100%. It gives you the option to select next, hit next. All right, so it's gonna ask you a couple questions on the connection type. How will your product be connected to this computer? Directly connected to the computer using USB cable that is already checked because that is how we are doing it and it already detects that and then you're going to select next and it's going to try to ping the printer and it's going to try to find it the good thing is that it tells you what it's doing here in the front it says the product has been detected sometimes in a situation like this the printer is not detected and then you just have to turn the printer on and off again try not to do that unless you absolutely have to because it does take uh, quite a few minutes for the printer to boot up if you've gotten this far, it, it will detect the printer because it's pulling the information off the printer. So as you can see, this process is a little bit slow, but it is very thorough and it's easy to follow through. So now we're just going to wait until uh, the printer installs. And luckily it gives you a status bar there. So after the install, it's going to drop you here as set as default printer. If you're in a home office or this is going to be on your desk, that's a good option to set. Also print a test page, that'll let you know if everything worked well. So you're gonna select next, and we're gonna do that wonderful more waiting. At this point you hear your printer turning on, and if everything went well, you will have a test page coming out soon. Windows printer test page. Okay, so now we are at the wireless direct printing. Usually we select off for this because if you select it on, it tells you that an unauthorized user or an unauthorized user within wireless range can connect to your printer and start printing documents. So if you're working at home, somebody, a neighbor, uh, a teenager can just print whatever they want to your printer and you really can't stop them. Also it uses extra power. So usually if you're at home or if, you're in a, if this is sitting on your desk, this is not an option that we really need to turn on. So we usually just select off. Select next. And then let's see, we don't need to do the website, you don't really need to register and just select finish. And you're good, your printer is installed. If you have any questions, give us a call at the IT service desk, but otherwise have a fantastic day.